All right, YouTube. Today we're taking a look at a pretty standard statics problem, and that is the situation where we've got a block on a surface. Now, if we push on this block down low, the block slides. But if we push up high on the block horizontally, the block tips over. And in this problem, we're going to solve for that critical point or that transition where the block transitions from sliding to tipping. Now, in order to determine whether the block's gonna slide or tip, the first thing we need to do is take a look at all the forces which are acting on this block. So first, this block has some mass, which means gravity is gonna be pulling on the center of mass downward. And because this ground is rough, there's some friction between the block and the ground. Now, regardless of whether the block tips or slides, the friction is gonna be acting along the bottom of the block in the opposite direction we're trying to push the block. So if we're trying to push the block to the left, friction is gonna be acting to the right. Now regardless of whether the block is sliding against the ground or tipping over, these are the three forces which are gonna be acting against the block. But to solve for the height at which this force being applied will cause the block to tip versus slide, I wanna set up a set of equations looking at both the conditions for tipping and the conditions for sliding. Let's look at the physics equations, which are gonna determine whether this block will tip or slide. So if we were to push on this block high enough, the block would try to tip over. And when it tips, it's gonna pivot around this corner right down here. Now, right at that transition, as it goes from sliding to tipping, the sum of all torques around this point right here is gonna be equal to zero. Now, the block has three different forces acting against it, producing torque around this point. Now starting with friction, the friction force is acting right here at the pivot point. So it's acting at a radius of zero. And ultimately what that means is friction is producing no torque around this point. See, torque is given by FR sine theta. So when we multiply this friction force by the radius at which it's acting relative to the point of zero, we find friction produces no torque around this point. Next, we have gravity. The force by gravity is mg. And the force of gravity is acting right here in the middle of this block. Now, we could work out the distance between this pivot point and this point right here. But in reality, if we look at this equation for torque, fr sine theta, you'll notice the value r sine theta is actually just half the width of the block. So our torque by gravity is simply given by mg multiplied by this distance, r sine theta, which is w over two. Now reducing this radius vector and angle down into this dimension w over two is what's called the effective moment arm. If you wanna see more about that, just click up here. And last we have this push force acting on the block. Now this push force is gonna act at some effective moment arm h away from this pivot point. Now we have to be careful here because the force by gravity is trying to rotate this block clockwise around this pivot point. This force, if it's gonna cause the block to tip, is gonna be actually trying to rotate the block counterclockwise. And so when we're talking about torques, we need to be careful with signs. If we're saying clockwise for this term is positive, that means the force or push force is going to be in the negative direction. So rearranging this equation a little bit, we get this expression, which on its own isn't all that useful. So let's take a look at what's happening when the block is sliding, and then we'll be able to actually put this to work in solving for this critical height, which is gonna separate sliding from tipping. So if this force is down low on the block, the block is simply going to slide along the ground. And just as the block begins to slide, we know the sum of all forces on the block in the x-axis is gonna be zero. That is to say the friction force to the right minus the push force to the left is gonna be zero. So rearranging this we'll get the push force is equal to the friction force friction being mu, the coefficient of friction, times mg, the weight of the block. 
Now it might not be completely obvious what we've set up here, but what we actually have are two equations now, which can be used to solve for this one value h. So if we substitute this equation for f into our equation for tipping, we have an expression that takes to, into account both the linear forces and torques right at this transition between the block sliding and tipping. Now you'll see the mass of the block is on both sides of the equal sign, so it cancels out, as does g. And this leaves us with this expression, which tells us the height right at this transition when the block goes from sliding against the ground to tipping. Now there's a couple of important things here to talk about. The first is the mass of the block is absolutely irrelevant as to whether or not the block is going to tip or slide. Additionally, the height of the block is irrelevant so long as the height of the block is greater than this value h which we solved over here. If this value h was found to be greater than the actual height of the block, there's no point along the actual block that you could push in order to force it to tip. So for any height h at which we apply this horizontal force, which is less than this value here, the block is going to slide. If we were to apply this force horizontally at some height which is greater than this value, the block is going to tip. All right, YouTube, I want to talk about this result we've derived. You see, the result tells us that the width of the block matters and the height does not. Now, it's easy enough to believe that the mass doesn't matter. We can see how that canceled out. But the idea that the height of the block is irrelevant seems counterintuitive. So I'm going to prove it. Look, if I push on this block, pushing on it right at about five up, it starts to transition to tipping. So if I take two blocks and stack one on top of the other, we effectively have a block that is now twice as tall as our original. If I push on this, still, four up it's sliding. Once I get up here to five, it tips. The height of the block is irrelevant. And that's a bit counterintuitive. But ultimately, it's only the width of this block that matters. Now there's one other thing I want to point out. And that is that if you're ever in a situation for some absolutely ridiculous reason, uh, where you only have a ruler, you can actually figure out the coefficient of friction between a block and a surface with just that ruler. See, if I push on this block, I don't need to know how hard I'm pushing on it. I only need to know the width and the position at which I'm pushing on the block. And from that, I can determine the coefficient of friction between the surface and the block. Hopefully that'll serve some of you nerds out there at some point in the future. And on that note, that's all for now.